Yo boys, what's going on? Willie P here, super excited to bring you today's video, which is going to be my ultimate guide to Udyr. A little backstory about me in case you guys don't know who I am. My name is Willie P. I hit Masters in Season 7. I hit Challenger 430 LP last season, and then this season I've been Challenger for the past three months. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know about the champion from runes to builds, itemization, clear pass, uh, you know, specific jungle matchups, orb walking, how to gank, all of the above are going to be covered. Um, and the timestamps will be in the description below if you guys want to skip around to certain parts of the video before we hop in if you guys wouldn't mind dropping a, uh, a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel this video took a lot of time to put together I'm gonna say in total probably 12 to 15 hours I've scrapped multiple multiple versions so it helps out a lot um, you know all the support you guys show me so without further ado let's go ahead and hop on in All right, boys, let's hop into the first section of this guide, which is going to be runes. Now, before we continue, I do want to mention this guide is going to be for Udyr, Tiger, Jungle only. Um, I'm not going to get into Udyr top. I'm not going to get into Phoenix, Udyr. Both are very, very weak on uh, Udyr right now. I could spend the next hour explaining to you guys why, um, but just take my word on it. Tiger, Udyr, Jungle is the best way to play Udyr um, in the current meta. So... With that being said, this rune page right here will be your bread and butter. This is the best rune page for Udyr. It gives you everything you need, um, and I'm briefly going to discuss why. So, press the attack works really, really well with Udyr um, because Udyr doesn't actually have abilities. Um, he has auto attack enhancements, and so the ability to do, you know, burst damage every third auto attack obviously has a lot of synergy on a champion that only auto attacks. So, press the attack is the best rune in slot for the Keystone. Now, as for the minor runes, Triumph is the best rune in the uh, upper rung here um, just because triumph allows you to heal after every single kill so this allows you to tower dive this allows you to team fight pretty well because you know if the dominoes start falling in a team fight you're going to get a bunch of your health bat like if you get three assists in a team fight you know that's going to be uh, what 36 percent of your max health back that is insane right um, so triumph is really really good on udir especially the way i play udir which is very aggressive um so Super, super good. The middle rung here, the Legend Tenacity, is by far the best for Udyr. Um, you can go Legend Alacrity if you want, but the ability to have, you know, what is it, 30% uh, less um, CC reduction or whatever is insane on Udyr. It also allows you to build Ninja Tabby um, very, very often. So, you know, Udyr's biggest counter, in my opinion, or Udyr's biggest counters um, are ADCs because, you know, Udyr doesn't have a gap closer. So, champions that can kite you and do a bunch of damage are really, really strong against Udyr, so the ability to take Ninja Tabby and take 12% less damage from every auto attack from an ADC is insane, so I take this, when I'm on my main account, I take this rune pretty much 100% of the time. Um, as for the bottom rung here, I always go Coup de Gras, the other two runes are very weak. This allows you to do 7% more damage to targets that are low on health, which means, you know, you can run in and one-shot people, you can tower dive, it's just really, really good. Now, as for the secondary runes, I strongly recommend you guys experiment around but for me what has given me the most success as well as other Udyr players at high elo we generally stick with celerity and water walking the reason we do that the biggest weakness as i just mentioned of Udyr is that you get kited so any movement speed is good movement speed on Udyr. um so you know celerity water walking gives you a ton of movement speed um and also water walking gives you extra damage in the river so when you're going for crab fights when you're going for barons dragons rift heralds all of the above water walking gets a lot of value now as for the minor runes you want to stick with attack speed adaptive force and armor the reason we go armor over scaling health is because uh, every jungle camp in the game does physical damage except gromp um, you know, so just by taking the six extra armor, you'll save yourself 80 to 100 health every single time you clear your jungle um, because of just the armor and the built-in resistances you'll have. So, like I said, this is the best rune page. Now, um, I am going to briefly talk about other rune pages, but if you guys want to go ahead and skip ahead, if you're just like, all right, Willie, I'm just here for the quick answer. This is what you guys want to be taking. Now, you. so as for other options, you can go Lethal Tempo. I take Lethal Tempo when I'm below Diamond 2, and I'm planning on building Tiamat. This is my favorite rune when I'm at low elo trying to hard, hard carry. It's a scaling rune, gives you a bunch of attack speed, and is super, 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 super strong if you do plan on building a team at and looking to one shot people fleet footwork i think is really bad on udir i think you guys could try it if you just want to have fun but i don't like it personally um so i wouldn't go fleet footwork um conqueror so 
Conqueror versus press the attack. I get this question a lot. I will say I think Conqueror is very, very good into tanky team comps. I think it's very good into melee champions. So I think if you're going to have, you know, if you're playing against champions where you can get more than five to six auto attacks off um, and not get kited, I think, you know, Conqueror is very, very good. So champions like Scion, um, Malphite, Myokai, Sejuani, Alistar, Braum, Blitzcrank, um, basically champions that, you know, don't really have a gap closer or a way of escaping from Udyr. I think Conqueror is really, really good. But in general, I strongly, strongly prefer Press the Attack. But like I said, if you are against a team comp that is full of melee champions, I think Conqueror is actually pretty decent. Um... Now, as for the Domination Tree, this is my favorite rune page when I'm playing Domination Tree. Hail of Blades is by far the best rune in slot in the Domination Tree. I don't like Electrocute. I think Electrocute's really, really bad on Udyr. I think it's a worse press the attack. Um, Predator is interesting. I think Predator is fun. But I think past 10 minutes, it doesn't do anything. So I do not like Predator. Um, but, you know, it is fun for running around at low elo and getting yourself really, really fed. Um, Dark Harvest. I'm not a big fan of Dark Harvest. In its current state, it's really weak. So with that being said, Halo Blades is by far the best rune in slot. For the Domination Tree, if you guys want, you can swap out for Triumph Legend Tenacity if you don't want to take Celerity Water Walking. But this, in my opinion, is a pretty decent rune page. It's still not as good as Press the Attack, but it's, it's you know, it is what it is. Um, another rune page that's really good, in my opinion, is uh, Phase Rush. I played Phase Rush to Challenger last season. Um, um, I'm kind of the one who made Phase Rush Udyr popular. Um, me in North America and then Branix over in EU West played a lot of this. But, uh, you know, when I hit Challenger last season, I kind of made, made Phase Rush like the meta rune for Udyr um, because nobody else was taking it at that time. Um, the reason I don't take Phase Rush anymore is Celerity no longer gives you bonus attack damage based off your total movement speed, so I feel like you just don't do enough damage anymore. Um, so this is a rune page if you want to try Phase Rush. Um, now, I do want to mention always stick with Legend Alacrity if you're going to go Phase Rush. Phase Rush doesn't actually give you combat stats. It doesn't give you damage. All it gives you is movement speed. So since you're going to have a weaker keystone, stick with the extra attack speed from Legend Alacrity to help you, um, you know, get extra combat stats to beat people or to kill them quicker. Um, Resolve Tree. I don't really like the Resolve Tree, and I really, really don't like Aftershock on Udyr. I think if you want to play Aftershock Udyr, you should be playing Sejuani or Ramis. Um, it's just not meant for Udyr's playstyle, at least not the way I play Udyr. Um, but with that being said, this is my favorite Aftershock rune page. Um, but like I said, I don't like this rune page. I do not recommend you guys take it um, because this is not Udyr uh, playstyle. And then as for Inspiration Tree, I don't really like Inspiration Tree on Udyr. So like I said, stick with this rune page, you know, 95% of the time. This will be your bread and butter. But if you want, you can experiment around with those other rune pages I just showed you. Itemization, there are two big questions that I usually get when it comes to itemization. Blue versus Red Smite, and then Tiamat versus No Tiamat, and I'm going to address both of those right out of the gate here. So, Blue Smite is better um, if you plan on playing against ranged champions, or if you think you're going to be spam ganking a lot. So... Um, you know, if you see an enemy team comp that, you know, are very weak to gank, so people like Jinx, uh, Misfortune, Quinn, Jace, um, you know, I'm trying to think of mid lane matchups like Cassidin is good. Basically, if you think you're going to be ganking a lot, Blue Smite is really, really strong. Or if the enemy team has a bunch of kiting and a bunch of, like, ranged champions, so we're talking, like, you know, Teemo, Kindred, Karthus, champions that have a lot of kiting and whatnot, I do think that uh, Blue Smite is really strong into. If the enemy team has a lot of uh, dueling champions, so we're talking like Master Yi, Xin Zhao, Fiora, Darius, um, champions like that. I strongly prefer Red Smite. Um, or if the enemy team has a lot of melee champions. So we're talking, you know, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like Alistar, Brahm, Sejuani, Malphite, all those champions. Uh, you know, Red Smite gets a lot of value. And on top of that, the true damage from Red Smite is very good against tanky team comps as well. So use your bed's judgment. It's going to be very situational, but I strongly prefer Red Smite versus melee team comps. Blue Smite versus Range Team Comps. Now let's address the other big question, Tiamat versus no Tiamat. Um, if you guys are above Diamond 2, I would say don't build Tiamat. Anybody below Diamond 2, use your best judgment. If you think you need to be farming or if you think you're going to be split pushing, go Tiamat. If you think you need to be playing for team fighting or if you think you need to play more tempo based, so like objective controlling,
something um, on the map invading a lot, I would say don't go Tiamat. Um, so use your best judgment. Um, I will say though, when I'm below Diamond 2 trying to hard carry, I almost always go Tiamat. Um, so just keep that with keep that in mind. Now, as we move into the actual itemization here, I do briefly want to mention um, the rule of three. I didn't know what to call it, so I call it the rule of three. If the enemy team has three or more of the same type of champion, build against that. So, for example, if they've got three squishy champions, build more for, like, flash one-shotting them. So, we're talking, like, you know, uh, Triforce, Yomu's Ghost Blade, or, you know, like a, uh, a, a Triforce and a Ravenous Hydra, something like that, right? If the enemy team has three or more tanks, then build for tank shreds, so Blood Razor, um, Rage Blade, stuff like that. If the team comp has, you know, a lot of uh, physical damage champions, build uh, armor. If they have three or more magic damage champions, build magic resist. Use your best judgment. Every single game is different. Every single team comp is different. So there will not be one build that will do you the best. So I'm going to present to you guys kind of three different builds that I like a lot um, and, you know, whether or not I think they're good at low elo. So at low elo, the build path that you want to start, um, if you do plan on going Tiamat, um, and once again, when I'm smurfing, when I'm trying to hard carry, I almost always go Tiamat. So I start with Machete and Rejuvenation Bead, um, and I'll show you a clear path later to guarantee that you get Tiamat every single time, but you start Machete, Rejuvenation Bead, eventually on your first back, you're going to upgrade um, the Rejuvenation Bead into Tiamat, so you're going to have a Tiamat, and then what you're going to do is you're going to power farm for 1100 gold, and then you're going to pick yourself up a uh, Warhammer. Um, so at 1100 gold, go back to base, get yourself a Warhammer, um, and then from there, upgrade into either Red or Blue Smite. Um, once again, it's all entirely game dependent, but after that, upgrade into either Red or Blue Smite, and you want to pick up a Warrior Enchant. So this right here will be your core. You want to have this by 10 minutes if you can. That's the goal. Um, but if you could have both of these items by 10 minutes to 11 minutes, you're right on pace. Um, so get these two items and then pass that. You want to pick up boots. Once again, it's situational. Now, I, I will address the boots argument real quick. Um, on Udyr, build resistance boots. Don't build Moby boots. Don't build swiftness boots. Um, don't build cooldown boots. Build either Merc Treads or Ninja Tabby, depending on the team comp. Um, since we are going to have Legend Tenacity from the Rune page, um, you know, I generally prefer going ninja tabby um, but there are some games where you're going to need the magic resist from mr boots um, because a huge part of dealing with kiting because once again udir doesn't have a gap closer is you need to be tanky enough to run up to the target and stun them right and so uh you know boots um will give you those extra little resistances to make sure you don't die immediately right you can't deal damage if you can't even get to the target in the first place before getting kited um and dying so this right here um, it should be your first three items. Past that, you want to build a Triforce. Now, as for the Triforce components, I build Stinger, Sheen, Phage whenever I go Tiamat. Um, Sheen is really, really good when you have a Tiamat because it allows you to one-shot people. Um, you know, you run up, stun them, put a dot on them with Tiamat active and Sheen. Um, you'll pretty much one-shot any ADC. So this is the core build whenever you're doing Tiamat. Past this, I generally upgrade um, my Hydra into Ravenous Hydra. Um, so we pick up one of these. Um, we and then these are your four items. And then past that, I generally go um, Spirit Visage. And then I go uh, Dead Man's Plate. This is full build for Udyr whenever I'm doing this um, build. I think this is the best build for carrying low elo, and I strongly recommend this, um, this build to anybody that is below Diamond 2. Now... Let's talk about high elo builds. So if you guys are like Diamond 3, Diamond 2, if you get to an elo where you don't think you should be going Tiamat every game, um, the build that I generally do is I do, I rush a Warrior Enchant, pr preferably Red Smite. I like Red Smite a lot over Blue Smite, but get your jungle item as soon as possible. Get your boots uh, right after, and then actually you're going to go Sterax instead of uh, Triforce. Triforce is one of the most expensive items in the game. Um, so at high elo where you're not going to be getting, you know, five plus kills every game you want to go sterax and then past this i generally go randuins um, because it allows you to take less crit damage from adcs and then i pick up an adaptive helm since we're not going to have any life still built into the kit we don't want to go spirit massage if you have a healing support on your team so like soraka sona um, you can go spirit massage but keep in mind um, generally speaking especially at higher elo if you're going to have those type of supports on your team the enemy team is going to build um, grievous wounds anyway so spirit 
Dressage won't get that much value. Um, so I generally stick with Adaptive Helm, and then last item, I go Guardian Angel. This is the best build for Udyr at high elo. This will give you tons of team fighting potential, tons of survivability. You're going to be able to run up and kill any squishy with this build. Um, so... This is my favorite build at high elo, um, and then if you're at low elo and you want to skip, uh, you want to skip Tiamat. So this, the last build I'm going to present to you is a low elo build that doesn't have Tiamat. So once again, we're going to try and rush a warrior enchant, um, and then we're going to go boots as always. So ninja tab your merc treads depending on the team comp, and then rush a triforce. Triforce is obviously insane for objective control, split pushing all that, um, and then after this, I generally go Starax because this will give you a ton of survivability. There's lots of synergy between these two items. Um, this gives survivability and burst prevention and tenacity. This gives you tons of damage. So the two of these items will give you tons and tons of damage to one-shot squishies. And then past this, I generally go ZZ Rot um, for the extra resistances in both category. And then depending on team comp, once again, it gets situational here. Build either an MR item or an armor item. So we'll just say Dead Man's. Um, but this is another really, really good build if you don't want to build TM at at low elo so these are my three favorite builds for udir i think you should be building one of these three build paths every single game um and like i said every game is situational so just keep that in mind um you can't just copy and paste a build use your brain when you look at a team comp and think to yourself you know should i be building armor should i be building magic resist um and you know should i be building for tank shred or should i be building for squishies those are the itemization if you have any questions make sure to head over to my twitch twitch.tv backslash willy fucking p fucking is fknp um and ask my any questions you have over there or you could join my discord but generally speaking these are the best builds i found for udir right now All right, boys, I just hopped into a practice tool here, and I'm basically going to explain just very, very quickly here what Udyr's abilities do. I assume if you guys, you know, are looking up an Udyr guide, um, you know, kind of a little bit what Udyr does. So Udyr's a champion, you know, at every level you can level up your R. Um, so Udyr's kind of unique in that sense. Um, but don't worry about your R ability. Once again, this is Phoenix Stance. We're not going to be leveling this up until level 16, 17, and 18. So at level 1, you want to put a point into Tiger. So... Udyr's Tiger Stance, when you press the ability, um, you're going to get 5 seconds of increased attack speed, and on top of that, your next uh, attack will do a damage over time effect. That's why people call it the Tiger Dot. Um, if you ever hear me call it the Tiger Dot, um, it's because every third auto attack, um, you're going to do a bleed out effect. So think of Singed Poison, think of like Malzahar W, um, stuff like that. So um, Udyr... As you can see, and the reason I like Spirit Guard Udyr is because the animations are very clean. But every time you see me do that little, like, scratch effect on the target dummy, that is a Tiger Dot. Now, I'm going to briefly mention what a Double Dot is. I'm sure you've heard Udyr players talk about it before. Um, but Double Dot is basically when um, you get two Tiger Dots back to back, right? So, um, let me just cue one up here. So double dot here um right now if you notice my uh little icon down here says three that means my next auto attack will have a tiger strike applied to it so if i do two tiger strikes in a row refresh tiger that is a double dot um it's hard to tell at this point in the game because i don't have any items but here let me just level up a little bit put points in a tiger um give myself some gold and we'll go get a bunch of uh items when you're playing udir a big thing that you guys want to look for um is getting a double dot on a squishy so let me just level up tiger bear and i'll get a point in a turtle why not um but what you want to do is you want to sweep out vision and wait for somebody to walk into a bush so let's say you've already swept out vision in this bush and you see somebody walking to you what you want to do is you want to wait in this bush with a tiger dot ready to go when they get near you put a dot on them stun them and put a re, re put a fresh dot on them and if you've noticed we've done 1200 damage in about two seconds right that is insane it's the best way to kill squishies um and you know in early game in the early stages of the game you can pretty much one shot anybody that walks into udir and you get a double dot off so that's what a double dot is with that being said what turtle does turtle gives you a shield when you activate it heals you every third auto attack honestly don't only use turtle um when you're really low on health or if you just have an extra second of auto attacking that you don't know what to do so let's say you, like you run up you stun somebody and you've got one two three You've got a tiger cycle off. 
um, you can go into Turtle there just to get a shield. So Turtle's really weak. That's pretty simple. And then Udyr's Bear Stance um, is the bread and butter of Udyr, right? When you activate it, you're going to get increased movement speed. Um, and you'll also be able to stun a target for one second. Um, but there's a five second cooldown on it. So uh, you'll see here, I can stun this guy. I can stun this guy. I can stun this guy. I can stun this guy, right? Um, and now after five seconds, I can go back and restun the same target. So um, pretty straightforward, right? Pretty simple. Um, and Udyr like mechanically speaking is very very simple the only thing you have to worry about is the double dot now what i'm going to talk about here briefly is what orb walking is i talk about this a lot on stream and a lot of you guys don't actually know what that is um orb walking is basically there's a mechanic in league of legends where if the first 80 percent of the animation goes through you can cancel the last 20 percent by walking away so the best way place to demonstrate this is so if i'm in turtle you notice the actual auto attack animation is like lunge forward lunge back right forward back forward back forward back um it's kind of hard. It's really quick here um, since I've got the attack speed from Triforce, but that's pretty much, uh, you know, the auto attack animation. You can cancel the lunging back part, the lunging back part of Turtle by clicking away. So, right, if I orb walk here, notice how the only part of the animation that goes through is the... Uh, is the first half of the auto attack animation and then the, the last 20% of the animation I can cancel by clicking away. Why is this important, Willie? Well, let's say you're chasing somebody, so pretend this crab is a champion. What you wanna do is you wanna constantly just be moving with it and canceling your auto attack and, you know. So, with that being said, this is really, really important when you're ganking. Um, this is something that I strongly recommend if you guys have not practiced this, if you don't know what orb walking is, is it, if this is the first time you've ever, ever come across it, Go into a practice tool and do exactly what I'm doing. Just practice walking around and canceling the last 20% of your auto attack. You can even do it when you're clearing your jungle camp. So you can just practice it on a blue buff, kiting it towards your gromp. You know, stuff like this. Um, and this is another big part of playing Udyr that a lot of low elo junglers or Udyr players, because, you know, I coach from time to time. Um, this is something a lot of low elo Udyr jungle players don't do is kite their camps. So this is something you guys should be practicing, like I said. Um, and now let's talk about actually ganking on Udyr. So ganking on Udyr is very straightforward. Um, every time you go into a gank, always, always, always press turtle. Obviously, if you don't have mana, try and spare um, your turtle stance. But if you have mana, press turtle when you walk into a lane. Um, so let's say, you know, there's a there's somebody, let's say there's an enemy champion right here, right? And you're like, okay, so I'm blue side of the map. They're overextended. Let's try and gank them. What you want to do is you want to press turtle. This will give you a 60 health shield or a higher shield depending on um, how many points you have in a turtle, but it'll give you a 60 health shield and it'll also give you a passive stack. I haven't talked about Udyr's passive yet, but basically every time you switch stances, you're going to get 10% attack speed. You're also going to get five movement speed. So just by pressing turtle, there's 10% attack speed and five movement speed, right? So you press turtle. Um, I will say, so if you see like someone right here, path to where he's walking, don't run straight at him because um, if you run straight at him, he's just going to run into the bushes and get away. So you want to walk to where he's gonna go um so you want to walk here wait for him and then so like i said press turtle and then run in with bear stance run in with bear stance stun the guy put a dot on him and then you know if this is a live game he'll be moving so just auto attack move with him and then eventually uh eventually you'll kill him right or burn a flash or whatever um but that's pretty much ganking with Udyr. Once again, every time before you gank, go into Turtle. This will give you a passive stack. By the time you press Bear, you're going to have two passive stacks. And by the time you switch into Tiger, you're going to have the full um, the full effect of your passive because it only stacks three times. So you're going to have the full 30% bonus um, attack speed. And you're also going to have the full 15 bonus movement speed. Um, so that's pretty much playing Udyr in a nutshell. Super, super easy, right? Um, but you'll, and as you play Udyr more, and I think any high elo Udyr player will agree with me, the trick of playing Udyr is understanding how to control the map, how to be aggressive. It's not about actually playing the champion. He's a lot like Garen, right? Garen is super, super easy, but to play Garen well uh, requires more macro knowledge, how to move around the map and all that. How to clear your jungle as Udyr. So this is something um, that we're going to talk about two to three clear paths you can do. But for a standard start on Udyr, um, if you're not going to go Tiamat, so, you know, I strongly recommend, like I said, at low elo, I do like Tiamat. But I think when you're starting Udyr, skip Tiamat. 
what we're going to do here, um, this is the best clear path for Udyr in uh, Season 9. Um, this is something that myself, I, I've been abusing this a lot. Panzer Dragon has been abusing this. Um, you know, Metasolari, when I win, all these other super, super high elo Udyr players pretty much do this clear path every single game. So at the start of the game, make sure to go into Tiger Stance um, so you can get a double dot ready, what we just talked about. So as you do your blue... Put a dot on, immediately refresh Tiger, get a double dot going. Notice as I'm doing my jungle camp, we're applying that orb blocking. We're kiting our camp towards the Gromp because the start we're doing is uh, is blue Gromp. Notice that I've got my potions ticking immediately as soon as we start this. At, when you level up, go into bear stance to get your passive stacked um, and then go straight back into Tiger. The cycle we're doing here is four auto attacks in Tiger, two in bear. Um, and this is what you want to do after you get a um, the second tiger cycle off it only takes one more auto attack and bear to get it there the crab will spawn right at two minutes try and have pixel wards up at level one so in this bush and also in this bush tell your tell your laners to help you with that and then um do the crab the reason you want the pixel wards is to uh you know, is to make sure you can track the enemy jungle. After you do this crab, you're going to want to try and swing through mid. Get a gank off. Even if you don't get a gank off, get two minions worth of experience. So one minion died here. That's the second one. You'll hit level three. Hit level three, level up turtle, and then look to go get the other crab. You're going to be level three if the enemy jungler is here right now. He'll be level two, so you're going to have a level advantage. You're automatically going to win the 1v1. And then after you do the crab, go check on the enemy blue buff. Um... If the blue buff is alive, drop a ward over here. Try and do it. If you see the enemy jungler coming here, try and kill him. Um, Udyr is one of the best 1v1ers in the game early on, so you want to try and uh, kill him, fight him for it. Do keep in mind, though, as you're doing the blue, look at lanes. Make sure the enemy laners aren't rotating to stop you. Um, but if the enemy jungler isn't here, then just keep farming. Um, keep taking his jungle, and then after this, what you want to do um, is eat the blue gromp and then go into your jungle and then just full clear back up towards Gromp. You don't have to necessarily full clear. For example, um, if you go to your red buff and you notice that the enemy bot lane is overextended, gank them. If you see the mid laner overextended, gank them. If you see your top laner is low on health and it looks like he's about to get dove, do red buff and then just run straight top. The name of the game is jungling is very situational, but this should be your standard start on Udyr every, every single game. Um, this will give you the most amount of success and it, it will also um, enable you to uh, you know uh, get a double crab start bully the enemy jungler keep track of the enemy jungler super effectively um and this is what I recommend the majority of y'all do. Another clear path that I do, so after you've played Udyr for like five to 10 games, you kind of figure out how to actually play the champion. If you're at low elo, I strongly recommend you pick up a team at. So once again, at the start of the game, going to Tiger. Um, we're gonna skip forward a minute here so we don't have to wait for the buff to spawn. Um, but this is the clear path I do when I'm trying to get TM at as soon as possible. I'm going to skip another 30 seconds. Um, is we're going to do red buff. Once again, doing a double dot. We're going to tight kite towards Krugs. Um, so we're going to do this, yada, yada. Now, I will say the the downside of this start is you're going to run out of mana. And since you don't have a refillable potion, you're going to be pretty low on health. So getting early pixel wards is super, super important when you're doing a red Krug start. Um, because if the enemy jungler invades you or if you walk into a... Uh, river blind you know they can kill you when you go for a crab so what you're going to do is do red krugs kite this way because we're going to be walking to top crab here obviously if you're red side of the map just do the exact opposite of what i'm showing you right now so when you're doing red krugs leave one medium and one small krug alive this will guarantee you hit level three but what you would want want to do is go for the top crab you wouldn't actually go for this crab um, but replay bug it or replay tool um or practice tool is bugged for whatever reason the crab doesn't start. So once again, we would be up here doing this crab. After you get this crab, this will guarantee you hit level 3. And then what you do is you do a full clear. So you're going to do blue and then you go all the way back down. Um, you clear all the way back down towards your Krugs. Once again, keep an eye on lanes. If there's gank opportunities, take them. But if not, just full clear down towards uh, Krugs. By the time you get down here, your Krugs will respawn at around 423, 424. Um, and then if you do this exact clear path with the Rejuvenation Bead, you will guarantee that you get Tiamat every single game. So go back to base, get your Tiamat, and then look to gank, power farm, counter jungle. Just use the best judgment. Um... As you can, I'll probably be releasing 
YouTube videos on pathing, um, giving you guys a bunch of different examples on how to path, how to counter jungle, how to read the enemy jungler, how to track the enemy jungler. Um, but that is an entirely different video series. Um, you know, that's hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay that I don't think I can squeeze it in into this video. But as for actually playing Udyr, these are my two favorite starts. Another really good start if you guys want to do is do the Red Krug start, I said. And then instead of kiting out this way and walking up to the opposite side of the map, what you can do is you can actually go out in this river, look to gank bot if they're overextended. If not, do this crab and then look to go vertical jungle. So go walk into the enemy blue buff um, and try and fight and take that. Another clear path that's pretty good is you could start red buff, do red straight over to blue, and then after you do blue, walk out in the river, try and get this crab, and then look to gank either of the side lanes. This is a good clear path if you want to be very aggressive and get a level 2 gank off. You're not going to hit level 3 off this clear path, but you will be very, very close to level 3. Um, so, you know, if you just walk into a lane and get two, two minions worth of XP, um, you'll hit level 3. So these are the best clear paths for Udyr. All right, boys, before we hop into specific jungle matchups, I do want to talk about playstyle in Udyr, and what I mean by that is, like, when to split push, um, you know, uh, when to fight for Baron, how to take dragons, stuff like that. Um, this is super, super important when it comes to playing Udyr, because I'm just going to address this right now. If you guys don't know, Udyr scales really poorly. He has no ranged abilities. He's very, very bad in sieging. Um, all of his abilities are auto attack enhancements, which means, you know, if you can't deal with, uh, you know, like, in order to even deal damage, damage with Udyr, you have to be pretty much right on top of the target. With that being said, let's talk a little bit about playstyle. So first things first, every single time a crab is spawning on the map, so you know if you see, if you look at the minimap, every single time you see that beautiful yellow glowing icon in the river, path straight to that. Udyr is very, very good at contesting crabs. He's very good at 1v1ing. Um, the only time you're not going to get a crab as Udyr is if the enemy laners stop you from getting it. Um, in other words, if the enemy jungler gets help from the enemy laner, you won't be able to get it um, but as long as you're equal level or ahead of the enemy jungler you should always be able to get a crab on Udyr because he's one first off he takes the crab extremely fast and second off um, you know he's very good at 1v1ing so you know even if even if let's say you know your entire blue side jungle is clear so we're blue side of the map obviously this is inverted if you're red side but let's say your blue side of the map um, all of your AOE camps are up so let's say Krugs and Raptors are up but the crab is coming up on the other side of the map so you kind of have like a conflict of interest you can either choose going for crab or you can either choose to go farm your bot side camps I would say go for crab every single time because um, not only does it give you vision in the river so it helps your laners not get ganked but on top of that, this is a, a contested um, this is a contested neutral objective, whereas the jungle camps, in order for the enemy jungler to actually take your jungle camps, he's going to have to walk into your jungle um, and try and fight for them, and your laners can come kill him if he does that. So especially if he's behind, it's really risky for him to do that. So um, always prioritize crabs over farming. Um, at five minutes, dragon is going to spawn, so keep that in mind. Udyr is very, very, very good about soloing objectives, um, although I will say... Um, I will say you're going to have to set up vision, so if you're blue side of the map and you want to try and solo a dragon super early on, I will say don't solo ocean dragons early on. It's not worth losing tempo for, but Cloud, Mountain, and Infernal are all really, really good on Udyr. Um, they're good on everybody, but Udyr specifically is really good with all three of those dragons, so you want to try and get dragons as soon as possible. So at five minutes, try and walk to the dragon pit to get the dragon. Um, if you're blue side of the map, what you're going to do is set up a pink ward in this bush, and then also there will be a scrying plant right here. Make sure to hit the scrying plant because a lot of the times the enemy jungler can walk here and then hit the scrying plant into the dragon pit. And obviously if he sees you going for the dragon, he's going to come try and stop you. So set up a pink ward here. Hit the scrying plant here. Try and use a trinket ward or something here to see if he walks out through here. Um, preferably use your trinket ward right here. If you use your trinket ward right here, um, this will give you full information to see if he walks down through here. And then obviously your pink ward will protect to you um, if he walks out through this jungle entrance. So try and get the dragon if you can. If you're red side of the map, the setup you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up your pink ward 
Um, you want to set up your pink ward right here, so drop a pink ward right here, and then hit the scrying plant over here to make sure the enemy jungler can't just walk up, hit the scrying plant into the dragon pit and check it. Also, at like around five minutes in, I think it's five minutes and five seconds, um, this blast cone will spawn. So walk through here, drop your pink ward, hit the scrying plant into here, and then blast cone into the back of the pit. Um, and then do the dragon this way so that way the enemy jungler can't blast cone into the pit and steal it So um, this is another thing about Udyr right at 10 minutes You're gonna want to try and get Rift Herald too. So around 10 minutes to 11 minutes try and path the Rift Herald get it Especially in season 9 if you get Rift Herald um, You can drop it onto the enemy uh, towers and you can get turret plates turret plates give you 160 gold a piece um, Especially if you're alone 160 gold if you get two turret plates that is a free kill worth of gold so try and get Rift Herald super super early and pop it and use it on turret plates. Um, super super important this season to do that. And then I will say at 20 minutes, as long as you have a Warrior Enchant and a Triforce um, and Ninja Tabby, you're going to need armor because Baron does a lot of physical damage. But if you have those items and a Mountain Dragon, Udyr can solo Baron. Um, so if you have a Mountain Dragon, you can look to solo Baron. If you don't know the cycle you're going to want to do when you're fighting um, dragons and barons is four auto attacks in turtle, four auto attacks in tiger, rinse and repeat. Just keep doing that over and over and over. Try and kite out. Use your smite to get extra health if you need it. If you have two charges of smite, you can uh, you know use the first charge immediately to you know get health back and then use the last charge to actually secure the baron. But soloing barons is super super easy on Udyr. So um, that's something else you can look to do on Udyr. But as for playstyle, try and be very aggressive. Look to counter jungle when you can. Look to fight the enemy jungler when you can. Control all the crabs. Do all the neutral objectives. Um, Uder is very bad at ganking, but he's very, very good at controlling the map. Um, so understand that only gank if the laners are overextended or if it's a super easy lane to gank. So that's the playstyle of Uder um, in a nutshell. Um, now split, for, split pushing versus when not to split push. If your team is in a winning position, just group and get objectives. Don't split push because split push is a stalling strategy. Um, and if you already have the lead, just group and end the game. Um, if you have a Baron, so like if your team has already done the Baron, a good power play is 1-3-1. One, one. So go in a side lane, tell your weaker... Um, Tell your weaker laners to go into the mid lane and tell your strongest champion to go in the other side lane. Look to 1v1. Look to constantly be split pushing, um, pushing in all three lanes at once with Baron. That's a great power play there. Um, another good time to split push is if your team is super far behind. If your team is super far behind, go into a side lane. Just constantly be pushing in waves. Stall out the game. Try and give by your team by your team time um, to you know scale up get gold to make up for their mistakes early game um, split pushing is really good when you're behind or if you have a, a baron another effective strategy is a 4-1 push so send four like if you don't have any if nobody else on your team is strong and you're the only person that's strong um, tell all four of your teammates to go mid lane and you're going to go to top lane or bot lane depending on which towers have fallen um, and you're going to look to uh you're going to look to push a side lane while your team just groups mid and shoves mid. Um, so that's another really, really good split push strategy. Um, but besides that, man, I generally don't tr don't ever split push as jungle unless Baron is dead. So if Baron is still on the map, I'd say if you are going to split push a lane, it has to be top lane. So that way, if the enemy team starts Baron, you can just walk there really, really, really quick and answer the pressure that the enemy team is putting on the Baron pit. Um, that's one thing you can do. Um, but if Baron is on the map, play more for controlling vision. So get an Oracle lens, sweep out vision, put uh, pink words down, and try and get the Baron buff. So that's playstyle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hop into specific jungle matchups. Before we hop into this section, I will say that, you know, every uh, every champ or the, the thing that matters when you're jungling against um, enemy junglers is pathing and understanding how to set up a really good um, respawn cycle, how to fight them. Um, I'll briefly talk about whether or not you win the 1v1, but... Primarily, whoever gets ahead, especially in Season 9, is jungle. Um, just look to control crabs and continue to put pressure. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. That's the play style you want to be doing every single game on Udyr. So let's go ahead and hop into specific jungle matchups.
All right, boys, you ready for some rapid fire jungle matchups? I'm not gonna get dive too depth, in, too in depth to all these matchups because once again, it's very game dependent. Um, because jungle is really weak. Don't f focus your efforts more on laners this season instead of junglers. But I will tell you, I'm gonna go through kind of 20 to 30 of the most popular champions and explain to you: Do you beat them in the 1v1? What your starting clear pass should be and item spikes you have to be worried about. So Nunu and Willem, blue Gromp start. Um, Nunu will try and do dragons and rift heralds very early in the game. So keep that in mind you always win the 1v1 against Nunu the big thing against him is during team fights stun him as soon as he starts channeling his ult if he snowballs in he's going to snowball in channel his ult just stun him that's and uh, Udyr is very strong in a Nunu so super super easy matchup um, Vi is the next champion Vi you want to build red smite ninja tabby into um, at level 6 if Vi lands her ult and her Q you will die so dodge the Q um, but as long as you dodge the Q you'll be fine um, so Vi is a super super easy matchup and I would generally do if I was against Vi I'm going to be honest I would just do a red Krug start and then level 2 cheese a side lane because Vi tends to do the same Vi players either do red Raptors or they do red Krugs so you can get away with doing a greedy start if you don't know red Krugs is the best start for XP so that was the start I would do Shivana is a super easy matchup build red smite into her at level 6 if Shivana lands dragon form she'll kill you um AP Shavana in particular, Udyr is very strong into because if you ever get on top of her, you'll just straight up kill her. Um, control all the crabs with Shivana. Do a blue gromp start against Shivana. That that the blue gromp to the other crab. Um, control all the crabs. Shivana does does crabs really slow. Just be aware at level five or at five minutes in, Shivana will do um, dragon. So make sure to drop a pink ward in the dragon pit to make sure she doesn't try and steal it or sneak it or whatever. Jarvan is super super popular right now. The best thing to do against Jarvan is honestly do red to blue. So you want to do red to blue because a lot of time Jarvan will do red and then level two gank mid. Um, if you see him go for the gank on mid you can stop going to blue and then just come straight here and counter gank it this is the best clear path for jarvan try and fight him for all the crabs because jarvan is very very bad in the 1v1 against udir and his eq has like an 11 second cooldown and um, but besides that keep track of jarvan get a lot of early pink wards out to try and track him and try and spam ping your laners if they're overextended because jarvan um, especially in this season will just be walking around ganking on a loop shaco matchup shaco tends to do um red krugs a lot so the best clear path for that first this is a uh blue gromp all the way down to both crabs um shaco does not take a flash he takes ignite so if you see him use his q aggressively or if you see him mess up in pathing just flash on him immediately since he won't have flash to get away um and just kill him um, early game at level six with team at with his clone Shaco beats you in the 1v1 So definitely pick up ninja tabby and definitely pick up red smite into this matchup Master Yi Udyr is very strong into you should never lose a matchup against Master Yi um, All you need is just ninja tabby red smite very straightforward blue gromp start every single time uh, Ramus jungle is super easy blue gromp start look to constantly like fight him look to counter jungle him Make sure to go red smite the the build path you want to do against a Ramus is go red smite warrior into Merc treads into sterex super super easy matchup um, If you're losing to a Ramus, it's because you're not putting enough pressure on him early game um, So just constantly be breathing down his throat in the early game and understand that if you let the Ramus scale He is going to counter Udyr very very hard just don't let him scale. Udyr is a very hard counter to Ramus, in my opinion. A lot of people seem to struggle in that matchup, but I never have issues. Talia jungle, all you got to do is go blue smite Merc treads. Against Talia, just do red straight to the closest scuttle. Um, a lot of Talia players will do blue gromp themselves and then come out and try and do a crab. Um, at level 2, you will shit on Talia, pardon the language, but you will dumpster... Um, you will dumpster Talia, so just keep that in mind. Kha'Zix matchup, I generally ban Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is really broken against Udyr. Best thing to do against Kha'Zix, Ninja Tabby, Red Smite, and then just look to team fight with against Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is very, very bad in 5v5. So against Kha'Zix, the best clear path is Blue Gromp, Double Crab, and then go try and fight him for his blue buff. This is what I find to be the most successful clear path versus Kha'Zix. Rek'Sai jungle. Against Rek'Sai, early game, pre-level 6, you will beat him as long as you stun him first and don't get knocked up. If you get knocked up, you're going to lose the 1v1, so keep that in mind. At level 6, he will beat you until about a level 13, so from level 6 to level 13, don't try and 1v1 him. Ninja Tabby and Red Smite are your best friend in this matchup. Jax jungle. The trick against Jax jungle is baiting out the Counter-Strike. Without Counter-Strike, you beat him. With Counter-Strike, he beats you, so just kind of if you're against Jax jungle just understand that dynamic and that's kind of all you need to know blue gromp start all the way against Jax 
Um, Skarner Jungle, just build Ninja Tabby against him and just try and fight him in the 1v1. You beat him in the 1v1, but you're going to lose against him in 2v2s. Only build QSS against Skarner if there's somebody else on the team like Malzahar. Um, building QSS for Skarner ult alone generally is not worth it. Just build a Sterex. Be tanky enough to where even if he ults you, they can't kill you um, super quick. So with that being said, Red Smite Warrior Sterex is very good against Skarner. Karthus Jungle, Blue Smite and Merc Treads are your best friend. Um, just do a Blue Gromp start and look to kill him for every single crab. Um, and try and do dragons. Karthus does dragons very, very slow. So just uh, keep that in mind and try and take dragons. Ivern matchup, the best start is red buff over to blue buff. Um, secure your buffs as soon as possible. And then look to fight him for 1v1s. Don't fight him in 2v2s because he's very strong. And your game plan, honestly, build a Tiamat against Ivern. Um, because you want to split push and avoid the 5v5 as much as possible. Twitch jungle is really popular right now because of rat. Um, Twitch jungle, just do the same thing you would do against a Jarvan. Just do red over to blue. Expect a level 2 gank mid, and if he does show... Um, if he does show, then just go counter gank it. Um, but Twitch is a champion that if he doesn't have anybody peeling him, you'll kill him in three auto attacks. So pick up a blue smite, um, get early ninja tabbies, and get an early warrior enchant, and you'll kill him in like three auto attacks. Volley Bear is very hard to 1v1 as Udyr. Do a blue gromp start. So in the early game, control all the crabs. Try and counter jungle him when you can. But at level six, do not, do not fight Volley Bear unless you're really far ahead. Warwick is the same as Jax. Without Warwick's fear, you beat him in the 1v1. With the fear, he will beat you. At level 6, if he lands his ult, you're dead, so try and avoid the ult. Um, but once you get tanky enough, so like Warrior Sterex is very good into Warwick. Um, once you get tanky enough, you will be able to just face tank him and kill him um, with just Tiger's base damage. Fiddle 6 jungle is not as popular, but Fiddle 6 is Blue Gromp Crab. Fiddle 6 players start Talisman and Pink Ward, so don't invade him because he'll know if you're invading. Um, so just do control all the crabs try and pick up blue smite early get early merc treads and then just run this guy down save your stun for when he starts draining i um, in late game if he starts channeling his ult just flash stun him um, and you'll kill him every single time. Kindred matchup is very, very hard. Kindred is one of the hardest counters in the game for Udyr. Um, so try and control both crabs. Make sure she doesn't get any marks in the early game. If she gets marks, your life is just going to be hell. Um, Red Smite and Ninja Tabby is your best friend here. Don't go Blue Smite. Red Smite is better because late game, you can just run into Kindred and try and burst her down immediately. She'll press R and just give you, a, you know, basically a... Uh, enough quote unquote like survivability to make up for the fact that you don't have blue smite to run up and stun her so red smite is very good into the kindred matchup um i'm gonna clump these next four champions into the same category zin Zhao, rengar kane and graves are all the exact same they generally do a red raptor start these are the the, the clear path that the majority of them do just do blue gromp start against all these junglers and then just control all of the uh control all of the crabs you will beat all of these champions pre-level six post level six you have to wait for them to miss position except rengar i will say rengar you'll beat at every stage of the game udir is probably rengar's hardest counter um so keep that in mind um but those champions red smite ninja tabby um red once kane upgrades to red kane keep that in mind that he will actually beat you in the 1v1 if he lands the knockups but if you dodge the knockups you will beat him in the 1v1 uh, Pantheon jungle is Udyr's hardest counter, so just keep that in mind. You just got to understand that Pantheon can basically beat you until you get Red Smite and Ninja Tabbies, so do not fight him early game, and honestly, I don't really fight him until I max out Tiger and get enough attack speed to pop his passive. Um, one thing against Pantheon is Bear Stun will not stun Pantheon through his passive, so don't even try. Um, try and pop it with a Turtle Strike or something like that. Elise and Evelyn are the same champion in my opinion. Um, just build Merc Treads Blue Smite into and just try and counter gank them. Evelyn, you can be a little bit more aggressive against but generally speaking just wait for them to go for a bad gank and then punish them they're very good at being proactive gankers but if you counter gank them they have no way of escaping Lee Sin and Nocturne are in my opinion kind of the same type of champion Hecarim 2 these champions are dueling um, backslash spam ganking type champions so just try and build red smite try and build ninja tabby into you're not going to win the 1v1 against nocturne until you get warrior enchant because early game nocturne's fear lasts way too long so don't try and fight nocturne until you get warrior enchant but past warrior enchant you'll beat them in the 1v1 hecarim will be spam ganking leeson will be spam ganking just pick up ninja tabby early and try and match the ganks but besides that 
Um, I think those are rapid fire all of the junglers. When in doubt, do a blue gromp start. Look to control crabs. Use the play style we mentioned a little bit ago, and uh, that's kind of how to play into all those champions. So if you found yourself enjoying the content, please, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Really means a lot. And um, head over to my Twitch if you want to see me play live. Twitch.tv backslash Willie fucking P. Um, really appreciate all the support you, you guys have been showing me on my stream as of late. So thank you guys so much, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.